eighth episode of the People Society, a podcast about board games hosted by two longtime role players turned avid board gamers. My name is Katie. I'm Greg. On this episode, we explore more on the topic of Game of the Year, including our own little imaginary poll. We dig more into our collection, discussing the ins, the outs, the surprises, and the disappointments of episodes 38 and 39 of Playing Through Our Collection. And we talk more about some of the games we've gotten to play in the last couple of weeks. But before we get started, I feel like we say this a lot, but I'm just going to bring up the point. It's... It's the end of June. It's high pollen time frame allergy season here in Indiana. I feel yeah. like it's always high pollen allergy season. The pollen count this, this year have been really high because it, it looks like high. at times it looks like a dust storm in some of the job sites we're out yeah. where the, it's just coming off the trees and the flowers. Yeah, looks like a snowstorm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we've both been very allergy. Nasally. <laughs> Nasally. <laughs> okay, that's one word for it. Slim in the throat. Uh, without yeah. Without getting it's, it too gross. It's been an interesting couple of weeks. Good thing we know it's allergy season. We're not both sick. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, so. It's just not. <laughs> gross. Okay, shall we get on to it? Please. Okay. <laughs> we are going to talk about another game of the year thing going on. This is the how would you pronounce that? Jogo Doano? Sure. Jogo Doano. This is the... Uh, um, Portugal's Game, game of the Year. Game of the Year in Portugal. Yeah. The 2024 Game of the Year. And the only reason I mention it is <clears throat> they have five games up. We've played four of the five. Yeah. And the fifth one I really want to try. The fifth one we almost tried last year. And for whatever reason, we just never sat down to it. Yeah. Oh, well, two At years ago. Dice Tower of the West. Right. I think it was yeah. out on yeah. yeah. It was out on the hot games table at Dice Tower West. But there was nobody to teach it, and I did not want to sit in a very noisy, crowded room and try to read the rules. Right. Yep. But for the what other it's ones, supposed to be a very heavy <clears throat> game. Yep. So we got Horses Carriage. That's the one we've not played. That's the one we have not played. Nucleum, which we recently got. All these we've recently just got played too. Yeah. So Nucleum, which we found was it's I enjoyed yeah, it. I, I, I liked it too. I feel like it was brass on steroids. Yeah, I do see the whole brass part. Oh, I definitely of the game see that the because brass... you're building routes to be able to do yes, different things I and see you're that using influence. The, the power to use it. But the artwork looks like it's from I think is from Power Grid. I don't know. We haven't played Power Grid in probably seven or eight years. It's coming up in yep, the P's. We're almost there. <laughs> but you're going to pull out Power Grid and then you're like, yep. Yeah, probably. <laughs> then there's Evacuation. I really enjoyed this one. This one, one I was surprised. I, I wasn't quite exactly sure if I wanted to. And then when we were at Geekway, we uh, picked it up. We picked it we up. Like, we saw, yeah, we, we got to I was going to pick it. this one up. What was it? It was this one or Nucleum we was going to pick up. And then we ended up picking Nucleum up we, at another thing. We picked that up somewhere else. I don't uh, I think that was where. buy one, get one free at I don't know. the anyway. w- local game store. But Maybe. I wasn't quite yes. sure about that one. But it was a lot of fun. I liked it. <clears throat> we really wanted to get it back to the table, but of course we haven't got it back yet. to the table yet. Hopefully sometime soon. The next one is Hegemony, which is... Commonly mispronounced as hedge money. I could see that. Hegemony was a very interesting game. We sat down on our trip to Virginia with Jeff, uh, Jeff and his, his friend, friend Dan. Dan, yes. Um, and played that. And everybody plays one aspect of the U.S. workforce or mm-hmm. economy. And I know I was playing the working class, if I remember yes. correctly. We kind of switched roles. Yeah, and you were playing the wor- <clears throat> the corporations. Mm-hmm. And, and you work Jeff for a corporate the, company, yeah, he and I, I work, work in corporate America, and yep. you work in the working the class. The labor force. Yeah, the labor force. So it was, I don't remember, Dan's was, Dan and I's were very t- closely tied together, and now I don't remember, maybe he, I don't remember what the fourth class was, <laughs> but I know it was very closely tied to the working force. Mm-hmm. He was small business, basically, if yeah. I remember correctly. He was entrepreneurs and small business, mm-hmm. um, and then Jeff was the government. It was really interesting and very thematic. It's probably one of the most thematic games we've played all year, honestly. Yeah, it was. Just the way everything everything played out and your goals. Everybody had their own goals based on who they played. He was the um, middle class. He was the middle class. That's what yeah. it was. It was the, the working class, the capital class, middle class, and then, of course, the state or whatever the it was. The state, okay. <clears throat> so 
pretty much the same. Government, corporate, corporate world, or corporate America. Yeah. <laughs> Small business and entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and working class. Yeah. yeah. This is when I, I, I was interested. I really was interested in playing this. This one had never crossed my mind. But I had heard mixed reviews. A lot of people love it, and other people's like going, it's playing like Excel the board game. As I, Excel as in the, the Microsoft yes, thing. Yes. Yes. No, I, I'm I, I'm mm. a cell geek. I, I understand that yes. reference. And I do see that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I thought there was more to it than that. Yes, there was. That's why I, I said when I got into it, I was like, oh, this is not like a spreadsheet. We watched the hour and a half video on how to play. And a very good, good video at that. very thorough <clears throat> but concise video on how to play. And I was thinking, oh, God, I'm going to hate this. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Yeah, you kept whining to me. You need to put out more jobs. Yes. I was like, good. I need to make more money so I can afford to put out more jobs <laughs> to pay you guys. It was great. It was great. Yeah, because somebody tanked the the uh, the healthcare minimum wage and and the health care. Yes. Well, because because somebody kept raising taxes. I, I never and that, taxes. that that raising, raising the class. taxes is what what affected me because then I didn't have the money to put out the jobs okay. to be able to pay you guys uh-huh. and you guys couldn't make money. Well, and your primary goal was to make money. Yes. You had to end the game with so much money, yes. if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. My primary goal was to get all of my people working. Yeah. So as to have everybody lo- mm-hmm. unemployment low. Yep. So it was it was fun. It was so, yeah, it was so very interesting. I, got, I would I don't know that I'd ever want to play it again. That first game was so Good. Yes. I'm, and we don't own it. <clears throat> no, Jeff um, owned it. Jeff That's owns it. it. I, I could definitely see this being one that would not come off the shelf often. No. And unfortunately, it's one of those that if it doesn't, you're going to forget. Yes, because you'll things. have to go through that hour and a half long video or that to learn it book again. of a rule book. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, but anyway, very interesting game. We did very much enjoy it. Yes. So, and then there's Scholars, which we learned that Scholars we had, we had bought before we went yes. to Geekway, and then we learned it. What, uh, it is still sitting in shrink on our shelf. Yeah. We but we'll get to it. Way. Yeah. But yeah. So, I think, I keep saying this every time a new one of Shim Phillips games comes out, I was like, oh, I think this is my favorite one of it. I think this is one of my favorite. <laughs> I did, I think I do like this one better than the other one. What was Wayfair? the other one we have? Wayfarers. See, I, think I really I like enjoy this Wayfarers. Better. But I definitely like this one. But I before I can say it's one of my favorites or I like it better, I need to play it more. Yes. I need to get at least a second play in where it's not in the middle of a convention and I'm mm-hmm. not trying to focus on a lot of other things. And bless her heart, the person next to me doesn't have serious AP while she's not paying attention mm-hmm. to the game. Yep. There was a lot of distraction there. Yep. So I'm, I, I need to sit down where I can focus on it and – Luckily, yeah. we have that opportunity. And, and we have the game. It will come eventually off our shelf and get played again. Probably yeah. when we get to the yeses. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and you, <laughs> like you said, you can't focus in a loud area. I have a hard time focusing on intricate games like this in large convention settings. Mm-hmm. So. Well, it doesn't bother me, but I came from a big family yes. of total chaos, so I did not. I'm I, used to it. I came from a very quiet <clears throat> house, so. Yes, you did. Uh, but going, going backwards, though. We didn't really say anything about the evacuation, just that we liked it. Yes, that's true. We did not. But, so, well, <clears throat> first, while well, we're still on Scholars. Okay. This one is all about translation of text. Yes. You. That's the part I really liked about that yes. one. Really cool. So you are, throughout the game, you are hiring various scholars in order to translate text from whatever you get them from into, I think it's Arabic. I don't remember yes, what the I final think, translation has to be. Arabic, I believe. But <clears throat> some scholars only translate certain things. So you have to work your way through a couple of them to get to the final product. And, and it's all about hiring the right ones mm-hmm. to to get that done yep. and knowing where to go. So it's it was interesting. I really enjoyed yeah. it. I, I, I really like the fact that when you hire one of the ones – because you're putting out – the translators out onto the board right and people are using your translators and they're going to give you stars and right the end. you get you get money for or whatever you get something off of them yeah. using it and after and, so long they retire yeah and, and now they different ones retire at a different rate right like they one, retire two, at three, different rates and then you get points or something like that at the end when, when they retire when you were when they retire they now come to your player board and become a special ability you have yeah. for the rest of the game okay I couldn't get anybody to retire, so I never had 
I, for whatever reason, mine kept the 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 piece that was getting them close to retirement kept getting taken off. Yeah. And I think by the end of the game, I had one person retired. I don't like literally. That oh, was I it. Had, like I had like three or four. Yeah. Of them no, I had one. Uh, because mine kept getting And finished. I honestly didn't think I was going to win that game. You won on I... a fluke. But anyway, so interesting game. Yes. I want to dig more into it. Yes. So backing up to evacuation. Yes. Evacuation is all about if leaving one planet and moving all of your resources to another planet. Yes. Um, that is the short and simple of it. One planet is dying. You the the powers that be have found another planet that is suitable, and you're slowly trying to move all Terraform of it. your production resources and all of your your population to the new planet. Yep. And you're you're operating a, a spaceship between the two, and you've got to make sure you have enough resources on each one. Yeah, and you can have more than one spaceship. You yes, can have you can multiples. have more. Um, and it would actually behoove you to have more. But you've got to, the trick on this one is that as you are moving things, you have to make sure you leave production possibilities on one planet, yes, so that you can still operate your your ship, yeah, so that you can still feed your people. Mm-hmm. So there, you you can't just immediately move all of your fuel production to the new planet because then you have no way of getting your people off the old planet, right? Because you don't have any fuel. So it's it's a give and take a little bit, but. I just found it interesting. I'm definitely yes. wanting it, to it explore really, it some it was, more. It was be, it was a better. Yeah, I can't even talk now. It was a better game than I thought yes. it was going to be. Yes. I was like going, yeah. Okay. I very much. It's enjoyed a Vladimir it. Suchi game, and it, it, it's like his follow up to uh, Underwater, Underwater cities. cities. Not really an Underwater Cities game, but oh, not even close. But it was not his best game in that line. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So yep. Okay, so that right. is the uh, Portugal game nominees. Again, that was Horseless Carriage, Nucleum, Evacuation, Hegemony, and Scholars. Which one do you want? Um, Which one do I want to win? Well, again, not having played Horseless Carriage, I have no idea where that one sits. Right. Oh, my gosh, that's really hard because I really enjoyed the other four. Yeah, that's, that's what I was like. Oh, man, they... they... Pick some good ones here, cause yeah. I'm probably gonna say n- nucleum. Really? I don't know why, but I I just that one. I really want to explore three of those four a lot more. Three of the four. Well, hegemony. We're not. We don't really have the opportunity to explore very often. Right. Um. Nor do I feel like I need. Two, like I said, that first game was so epic. I just, I don't want to. Right. It was an intense game. So you're going to go with Nucleum. I'm going to go with Nucleum. Okay. So seeing as how we haven't played Horseless Carriage yet. Yeah. I feel Nucleum, I've seen it done before. Brass. Okay. Scholars, it's a Shim Phillips game. It's the way he does it. I mean, yeah. you're kind of used to what he's doing after you've played, if you've played Wayfarers and then, you know, okay, this series is all going to be about dice placement and stuff. Right. Evacuation. I feel like it's a little bit of like, well, it's not really terraforming Mars, but it, I feel like I've seen it before. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of tile placement on the planets. Yes. So you're, stuff, you're so. moving it kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, Almost a terraforming Mars part of like where you're putting tiles on Mars to terraform it, mm-hmm. but mix that with the the shuttlecraft and everything from on Mars. Okay. So you're de- 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 relying on that shuttle to get different things to different places and stuff. Okay. So you're saying hegemony then? But I'm saying hegemony because <laughs> it's very. I think it's very it unique. Is I've very not unique. seen anything do that. No, at you're least right. I and haven't. It is super we haven't thematic. played. Yeah, we haven't played anything really like this, and it's yeah. very thematic. So, yeah, I would go with Hegemony. Okay. I could see that. I feel like Hegemony is such a heavy game. I don't know. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't know what the Portugal awards go after. Like, the Spiel either. goes after family friendly. That's yep. why all of their games were so light. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, what, what is that? Jogo, Jogo do Ana? Jogo do Ana. I'm totally butchering that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they gear toward. 
Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, but anyway. Well, they got the listings. Like, 2022 was Imperial Steam. 2021 was Imperial Struggle. Barrage was 2020. And Root was 2019. So Liz, Liz was 2018. Was Great Western Trail. Great Western Lombosa. Trail. Yep. So it sounds like they go for slightly heavier games as yeah. their game of the year. Or at mm-hmm. Labora. Wow, we got to play that one tomorrow, actually. <laughs> yeah. That was 2012. Twa. That game is that old? What? Or Labora? Or, little, yeah. or at, and it is at. Remember? It's okay. At. Little background. Last night we had a conversation about is it Aura at Labora or Aura and Labora? And I looked at the box, and by God, that symbol it's, looks like an and symbol, it's an aura ampersand. At I know. Labora. I, I That's looked, why I was trying to say, and you're like, no, it's got well, an ampersand. Because I, I was had like, looked, the but whole that's way home, I'm like, like, yeah, the whole way drive home from Westfield, I'm like, going, I don't think that's an ampersand. I no. think it's at. It looks like an ampersand, but it looks like a. A funky ampersand. So I opened up the rule book and found where it was actually written out, and it is Aura et Labora, yep. E-T. It, mm-hmm. it's, on the YouTube version of this, I will show you a picture of the wording right mm-hmm. now so that you can see what I'm talking about. But they skipped it is a few years didn't they? No, no, I guess not. No. Okay. Anyway. 2009. Agricola. Enough of this. Yeah. Moving on. Okay. So, Yep. So let us know in the comments what you guys think of those five games. So with all this talk of games of the years and everything, I figured if the Meeple Society did a game of the year, what would this year's be? And these are games. Now, mind you, these are games that we have actually played. So we know something about the game. There's a so, lot out there we've not played, right. though. So we have only played, it looks like, 27. I think there was a couple more on here. Well, there was a couple more on there that was like they were saying they were 22 or 24. It's like, well, I can't put those on there because they can't didn't come out in 2023. Okay. So we've played only, we only played 27 of the thousands and thousands of games that came out in 2023. So these are our list of 2023 games. We are going to go through here and pick out five of them. That we think, you think we've we done agree this ahead of time. that we agree on, okay. and then I'm going to put up a poll on. I I'm going to put it out on the X. I will put it on our Facebook page, and any place else that I have where I can put a poll up. So go to those, looking for those, or you can actually, while listening and write these down, you can pick it and then email us at meeplesociety at mail dot com. Well, I already see one omission. What Hegem- is that? Hegemony well, let's go through the list there. first, and then we can admit. Okay. So we have Three Ring Circus. Okay. After Us. Okay. Age of Rome. Okay. Ancient Knowledge. Okay. Apiary. Cosmoctopus. Daybreak. Deep Dive. Earth. Evacuation. Ice. In the Footsteps of Darwin. Junk Drawer. Kuntahara, the city of silver, life on the Amazonia, Miller Zoo, Nucleum, and she's marking them as I go down the list. <laughs> Outrun the Bear, Rolling Heights, Scholars of the South Tigris, Spellbook, Sunrise Lane, The Fox Experiment, Ticket to Ride Legacy, Legends of the West, Trailblazers, Wild Tiled West, and Yokai Sketch. Trailblazers would. Trailblazers oh, is, is a card game. Okay. Yes. I was gonna that, say, wait, that hasn't even come game. in via uh, Kickstarter yet. No. Wrong game. Different, different, different one. This is okay. the Bitwing Games. The one. card game. Okay. Okay. So out of that list, we agreed on four. We, we did. originally were saying five, but we agreed on four. four. We couldn't quite agree because you have life on the Amazonian, and I had hegemony. Mark and, well, you and also had ancient knowledge, Mark. So you actually also have six, ancient knowledge, Mark. Too, which I like ancient knowledge and hegemony mm. too. But I like life of the Amazonia more. Okay. So, so these are the ones that we have that we're going to put up on a poll and let you guys vote and see what the society thinks should be the game of the year of the games of 2023 that we have actually played. Right. So the first one is Apiary. We both really like that, even though Katie can't win it. The challenge is real. <laughs> the challenge is real, real. Yeah. Real, real? Real, okay. real. Anyway, the next one is Earth, which I think is kind of a no-brainer, but 
It's a neat. It's a really cool game, game, and with the expansion yeah. coming up, it's going oh, to be more interesting. Then we have Nucleum, which we yeah. both really enjoyed. Yes. And we have Ticket to Ride Legacy Legends of the West. Yes. So that one's going to be a hard one if no, not everybody has played it. This is true. This is but true. it's a really cool. I mean, everybody's seen. If they I've, have never played it, they're going to look at it as, oh, it's just a ticket to ride. It's like, it is a ticket to ride. It is. But it is a very, very different ticket to ride. Yes. I mean, Japan made ticket to ride a little bit different. Well, they've all done something a little yeah. different. This but, one is really cool because yeah. you're building the map. Yes. Throughout the game. I like of the this. fact that the, you're building the map and you're gaining more trains as the game mm-hmm. goes on. Because you're starting in the old eastern seaboard. Yeah, you're starting on the eastern and seaboard. And you're growing out to the west as they did back in those days. We need to finish this. We have four games left. We need to finish this game. Yes, we do. Because we'll we even there. got those little miniatures, the little, the little yes. miniatures that go on the Yes, we have the little miniature towns east. now that we bought. Yep. Somewhere on Don't the say too to... much because you'll give away things That's if true. people have not played this. But it is a no very spoilers. cool game, and it's one of those that when you get done with it, you can actually play it's it. A, it's a custom board. Yeah, you yeah. can continue to play it as yeah. your own custom game because there's, like any legacy game, you've got cards that Lots you either of keep these. Yeah, you and... either keep these cards or you don't keep these cards. These are the cards we picked, and yeah. just like in almost any other legacy game. Yeah. Very fun game. So yeah, so that there it is. It is again. It's Apiary, Earth, Nucleum, and Ticket to Ride: Legacy of the West. Let us know Legend one way or the West. other, or even in, if you're watching this or listening to this on YouTube, you can put it in the comment of what or, game. Or you do think. you agree more with Greg's ancient knowledge, or my life of the Amazonian, or my or hegemony? Hegemony. Just let us know. I'm going to put a poll Those up now. Hegemony and. Uh, What's the other one? Life on the Amazonian and Ancient Knowledge probably will not be on the list. Right. It will probably be the four that we've, we've agreed upon, which okay. is all. Trust us, folks. This is a lot for us to agree on <laughs> games that we like. But, yeah, I'm going to put those on polls, like I said, on our Facebook page. I think I can do a poll on our like page. So if you're subscribed to our like page on Facebook, you can get it there or join our Facebook group. And see the poll there. You can also go to X, follow us on X, and look for our posts there. I think you can do a poll on threads as well. We are on threads. I'll put it there. And maybe I can dust uh, dust off the old BG, uh, BGG uh, guild and put it in there if I can remember to. Right. Yeah. So that is that is that our nominees for our meeple society <laughs> game of the year as official as that is yeah you're not going to get anything if one of you game designers actually listen to us i'm 100 percent surprised right but you don't get nothing you just get hey we won congratulations that. congratulations you, you don't get to put a sticker on your game you don't get a trophy we don't have any of that Nope. Now, if you are a designer or a game company and actually listen and want to sponsor us so we can do that, fabulous. Let us know. Yeah, definitely let we'll us talk. know. <laughs> Email us at meeplesociety at mail.com. <laughs> Let's move on to the ins and outs of a board game collection. This is where we talk about our videos of our playing through our collection and tell you what games stayed in, what games left, the surprise of that episode, and the disappointment of that episode. And we actually have surprises and disappointments for both episodes this time. We do. All right. So we're talking about 38 and 39. All right. On episode 38 of Playing Through Our Collection, we are firmly entrenched in the eyes. Actually, this is the last of the eyes, now that I look at it. Yes. Uh, We played 14 games. We started out with a game called I Spy, not the kid's game of I Spy, I, comma, Spy. We'll come back to that one. Yes. And we played Imotep, Imotep Duel. Is it Imotep or Emotep? I've heard it both ways. Shut up. <laughs> we played Imperial Settlers, Imperial Settlers Roll and Write, In Pursuit, Indianapolis in a Box, Ingenious, Ingenious Challenges, Inklings, Iron Dragon, Isle of Sky, Istanbul, and Italyopoly, which is exactly what it sounds like. Yes. All right. So the ins and outs on this one. Where do you want to start? Disappoint? 
announcement, surprise out in. We always start with the ins. Okay. Okay. Well, so there's been times we talked about the disappointments first. Did we? Oh, well, whatever. Okay. Anyway. So the in. So the in. The game that stayed was I Spy. This is a game based during, is it the Cold War or is it, it's. It is it's based before in the Great Apocalypse, for World War One. Is it that old? I guess it yes. is. Yeah, it's based in the. Okay. I will look it up. You continue to talk about it. Okay. All right. So on this, in this game, you are each playing a spy that has a certain affiliation with a country. Problem is, nobody knows who that affiliation is. You do, but that's it. The goal is to get your country's marker higher on the score track without anybody else knowing that it's you. There are six countries involved. All of the countries' markers move up and down based on the cards that you play. Um, every card, everybody has the same deck of cards. One may let you move a certain number of spaces. One may let you interact with a government in a specific city. One may let you gain coins if you happen to pass by them or land on them. Um, or just gain coins from the, the treasury. Coins are important. Coins are how you get companions. They're not companions, but they're, uh, oh my gosh, contacts, I think. But regardless, this one is all about <laughs> spycraft. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. So you're playing out your cards to do various actions on your turn. And as you're doing this, there are markers on the cards that show what markers are moving up how far or how much influence you're putting into each of the that country that country's been so moving four spaces may allow italy to get four and i do not remember the exact cards so uh, but moving up moving so many spaces on the board may allow italy to gain four pieces of influence um, maybe going into a specific city will give Belgium so much influence. And then at the end of the round, you add up who has the most influence and that person gets so, that, that, that country gets so many points. The second person gets so many points. The third, I should say country, not person, because it's not a specific player that's getting these points. It's the countries involved. It plays four player. There's six countries involved. <clears throat> so there's always going to be a couple of neutral countries in there. Yes. Um, but it's just very interesting because throughout the game, you can kind of figure out what countries some people are. Mm -hmm. I'm horrible at figuring that part out. Yeah, this I, is. I enjoy the game. I am horrible at figuring yeah, out Yeah, this who's is who. kind of a hidden, hidden role or hidden yeah, agenda. Hidden agenda. I could hidden see that. Hidden agenda game. Because, yeah, because you're trying to figure out. Who everybody Who's else is who? because you don't want to play cards or to do things that are going to allow other players to become more yeah. influential. And the whole time you're trying not to uh, to do stuff just, that's going to make to, yours. Yeah. yeah. Attract attention to yourself. Yes, as I to want what to play this backing. card because I'm playing Italy and it will give mm -hmm. me four influence. But if I play this card too many times, granted that card lets me move. Mm -hmm. So it's very obvious it's a good card to play. But and, yeah. and the fact that you can peek, because at the end of each round or at the end of a certain oh, amount yeah, of rounds, the politicians. the politicians come up and they do certain things to different areas. Yes. And there's ways that you can peek and see what they are and you can move them around if you have yeah. a special power. That is really cool. I went to their website. Uh -huh. It's the way they have this set up, it's almost like it's a movie introduction. Oh, yeah. Though. It's a really cool website. Because uh, here, I'll read parts of it here. It says, I spy... It is the eve of the Great War. The year is 1908. Okay. And the power of Europe simmer, powers of Europe simmer in an uneasy peace. Massive armies ha are being amassed. I'm sorry. Massive armies are being raised. Oh, okay. This is the dawn of the age of espionage. You are one of those agents. Stability is easier to destroy than to create. And, of course, each one of those little texts have something underneath to explain what they're talking about, though. But it's really cool. Um, and the fact that we got this in a swag bag yes. at HoosierCon yeah, many, many years ago. Yeah, we never heard of this game. It's, it is a really cool game to bring. It's 30 minutes per player. We have played it at four players. Yes. 
And it probably took times. two, two and a half hours. Yeah. So, but but it's, it's such a cool. Uh, we played this with Justin and Jackie, our yes. son and our daughter in law, and, and they, they liked both it liked enough. it enough. They looked for it, but it was really expensive and hard to find. And hard to find. But we got a copy at Dice Tower Retreat a couple of years ago. Yeah, off the gate, the exchange off the table. exchange table, unopened even. Yeah. So I, I texted him. I said, "Hey, you you're want a, you want this game?" <laughs> and he goes, "Sure." So I picked it up and got it. Yeah. So yeah, so it is a really cool game. If you ever get a chance to play this one, I would suggest it. They say you can Give go try, on, least, yeah. You can go on the Lost Boy Productions webpage, and they are actually still selling it for forty five dollars. Oh, that's not horrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, good luck getting everything back in the box, though. I will give you that warning. <laughs> it right. takes some strategic maneuvering to get everything in this box. The yes, box it does. To be Ours is all bagged deeper. up. Ours is bagged. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's a thinner box. It's a very thin box. Yeah. It's it's a kind of a longer, thinner it's box. All, but it's not almost a, a ticket to write box, size. Or not a ticket to write. I'm sorry. It is a um, it's pandemic like size box. Underwater cities cut no, in half. It's a pandemic size box. Is it? It is a pandemic size box. Yeah. I'm trying to look for it in this room, but I can't remember where we put it. If you ever want to know what this room looks like, just go and look at the beginning of any of our playing through our collection videos because yeah. it shows this room and then the other game room, of course. But yes. Well, we, it, I, also I don't know where it's put. Thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's around. It's a black box, too, so yeah, it's it kind of blends right in into the cabinet. We have black shelves. Yeah, and I can't see everything from here. So, anyway. Anyway, enough of that. So, continuing. Oh, there it is. Down there by Puerto Rico. About a That'd be great if I knew where. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it does blend yeah, right about in. a ticket ride or a pandemic size box. Anyway, continuing on, we talked enough about this. All right, the game that left our collection out of this mix. This was a. I, I'm sure you probably guessed it. It is Italyopoly. <laughs> now, ironically, we played two Monopoly esque games in this mix: Indianapolis in a Box, which is an Italy, or is an 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 Opoly style game. And then Italyopoly. Mm-hmm. Indianapolis in a box we ended up keeping because it was like walking down memory lane for us. Yes. Everything, all of the locations in there were straight out of Greg's childhood. Um, places that, a lot of places that don't even exist anymore. They've been torn down or revamped or renamed or whatever. Um, so we kept that one just because we are based here in Indianapolis. Yes. But. Italyopoly, I found at a Goodwill, mm-hmm. I found it at a Goodwill, um, oh my gosh, one of the big centers where everything's in bins. Yeah. I um, found, what is that called? That The the distribution center. Distribution I found center, it at okay. a Goodwill distribution center in a bin. I had to hunt through the bin to find all the pieces, but I did find them all. Amazing. Um it had not even been opened, so it wasn't as hard to find them all as you might think because all the cards were still wrapped up and all the, the money was still wrapped up, and I just had to find all the pieces that had been opened. So we played it, and it was okay, but at its heart, it's Monopoly yeah. based in Italy. They don't even list it on BGG. No, they don't. It's it's In order to find it, you have to dig through the Monopoly oh, geez. versions. Yeah. It's I don't not. Want to do that. I did find it at one point. It is. It's hard BGG to find. BGG started laughing at me. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway, um, but I found this right after we did a trip to Italy, so I thought yes. it was pretty interesting. And it did sit on the shelf for a very long time. But really, that's the only reason I picked it up. We played it instead of some locations. It's all about the desserts and it's all about the monuments and the the different things. So it was interesting, cause especially having been there. But it didn't really find a home in the collection. So mm-hmm. this one did leave the collection. Um, because at its heart, it is a Monopoly game. Okay, I looked through Monopoly. It wasn't there. And I looked through the Opolis, and it's not there. So anyway, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Said. The surprise of this one. This was another Goodwill find. Mm-hmm. It does sit in our collection, though. Yes. It's not going anywhere. It's a train game. It's a train game. It's a crane rail game. Yeah, yes, and I love crane rail games. This is the Iron Dragon. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we only have two crane rail games. The very first one we picked up when we um, at Mayfair, our first year, we discovered them at Gen Con, and that was May, uh, Empire, Empire Express. Express. And then this one we found at Goodwill for five bucks. 
And I picked it up because, you know, I knew it was out of print. Mm-hmm. So why not? I think you were with me on this one. Yeah, I, I found, found it and pulled it off. I was yeah. like, oh, Yeah, we this. found it out at the one in Plainfield. Mm-hmm. But um, very interesting crane rail game. It is more... I don't want to say set in, it's more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, sci-fi? No, no, not sci-fi, fantasy. Fantasy, thank you. Why couldn't I come up with that? <laughs> it's more of your D&D-esque fantasy realm. BG's description literally says, a crane rail game set in a fantasy world with spells and dragons. Well, see, there you go. And that is exactly it. See, I'm not looking at BGG. I'm going off the top of my head here. <laughs> so... This one is interesting because, number one, the board is huge. Mm -hmm. But, two, there's an underground part that you can only access in certain areas of the board. And it takes you to a completely separate board when you enter the underground. Yes. But if you're underground for very long, you got to pay the trolls. Yeah, it's the trolls that that take you out. Yeah. So, But some of the the jobs you have to do take Take you you underground. And the underground can be a faster way to get across. Yes, because you can go in one area and then come out like almost Someplace, all the way on the other side of the board. Pretty much, yeah. Which so, I think that's the coolest part of the entire yeah, game. I think it's very interesting. So, But anyway, that surprised us at, uh, number one, finding it for that price at a Goodwill. But two, just how much we enjoyed it. Yes. Noble Knight has copies of it. Do, do they? Only for $175. Wow, you sure you don't want to sell that one? <laughs> no, I do not. I <laughs> like the game enough that I want to keep. Okay. All right. And our disappointment of this episode. Um, now, we are both we both very much enjoy the game Ingenious. Mm-hmm. Again, another Goodwill find. Go figure. Um, we didn't pay full price for any of these games. A, shortly after really enjoying Ingenious, and I had found a couple copies by this point. We are down to just one copy, though. I found a little little box game, a small box game called Ingenious Challenges. And it's three separate games in there. And this is our disappointment. There were three separate games in there. And it, okay, the one good thing about it, I, I didn't hate the game. There were certain ones in there that were not as good as I would have hoped. Right. And maybe at a higher player count, they would be better. But there was a card game based around the rules of Ingenious. There was a token Mm -hmm. game and there was a dice game mixed in there. Again, it's another one of those that the box could have been just slightly bigger and been easier to deal with. But I don't know. It's all three of the games in there were okay. Mm -hmm. But as good as Ingenious is, I had hoped for better Mm -hmm. out of them. So that's why they hit our disappointment pile. Yeah, it definitely kind of left you like... Yeah. Really? They just took a really cool game and just... Yeah. And Ingenious, if you've never played, is... It's kind of almost a domino-type mechanism, uh, only it's hexagons. All of of the pieces are two hexagon pieces that are stuck together, sometimes different colors, sometimes the same color. And the goal is to lay the pieces down in a way that they are touching similar colors because that's how you score them. You score... Yep. How many colors are in a row in a straight line from the piece you just laid down um, of matching colors? And you can, if you can pull that off off of both colors, then fabulous. Sometimes that's not possible. But you score in any direction the colors that match what you just laid down. So to take this and make a card game and a, board, a dice game and then a, a token game... Mm-hmm. I don't know, it was just kind of weird. Yeah, it just kind of fell flat. It did fl- fall flat for both of us. So anyway, but anyway, that is episode 38. All right, episode 39. On episode 39, we played a total of 22 games. And this was one of our four larger go-backs ones for too. some reason. Oh, this is because we had some go-backs and we did all of the J's in one video. Because we don't have a lot of J's. Yeah, that's why this one was so Still large. Still don't have a lot of J's because I don't know a lot of these even stayed. They did not a lot, A lot actually. of these went away. Okay, so the four go-backs we had were Alma Mater, Atlantis Rising, Cosmoctopus, and Flamecraft. These were all games that we picked up at the Dice Tower Retreat or in route to or from. Uh, all those except for Cosmoctopus. We bought here Flamecraft. after we got back, yeah. Anyway. In addition to those four... We also played Japur, <laughs> Jake and the Neverland Pirates, Tricks and Traps, Jake and the Neverland Pirates, Who Shook Hook, 
Jamaica with the expansion of the crew. Uh, Jenga, Jenga Boom, and Jenga Tetris. Jahari, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Jumanji, Jump Drive, Jumpin' Monkeys, Jungle Cruise Adventure Game, Jungle Speed, Junk Drawer, Jurassic Park 3 Island Survival Game, Just Desserts, and Just One. All right, so our in for this game, actually a lot of these games stayed. Did they? Um, yeah, I didn't we think. did. Yeah, we still have, well, number one, all four of the go-backs. Yes. We still have Japur. Yep. We still have Jamaica. We have the base Jenga, only because it is the base Jenga. Uh, Jahari. We have Jahari. Okay. We have Journey to the Center Maybe of the Earth. Jump Drive. We have Junk Jump Drive and Jungle Cruise. And Junk And drawer. Just One and Junk okay. Drawer. So a okay. lot of these stay. But the one we're going to talk about is Flamecraft. Um, Flamecraft was the newest of the ones on this list, the rest of them we'd had for a really long time. And uh, the first time we got to play it was actually at Dice Tower West with, it was literally, I think, the day we were leaving or the day before we left. Yes, I think so. Uh, yes. We sat down and got a five or six player game in of it. I want to say we had a full table. Yeah. And I think it was a five player game. Yes. We had always looked at the game and thought it was very childlike yeah because well you of the i think didn't you you were wanting to actually talk about you talked about backing this yes i did talk about backing it and i was like eh. and then when i looked at it i thought yeah i don't it doesn't look like something's going to come to the table very often so we let it go at the time we were full up we had hit our limit of 12 which by the way is non-existent now but whatever that's beside the point you have 12 all on your own i think don't you no <laughs> What, 11? <laughs> no. <laughs> One of them is Dice Tower, and half of them are expansions. Those don't count. We decided this already. Anyway. Whatever. Regardless, at the time, we decided not to back it. Um, and I kind of wish I, I had just for all of the extra components, but at the same time, it's all right. We got a copy for free at the Dice Tower, so. Since then, you have basically taken our basic copy. I have. And made it deluxe. The only thing you don't have is the, the meeple, the, uh. The big dragons. The the uh, uh, standy, not the standy, the... Uh, the um, molds, the dragon plastic yeah, molds. Those, uh, yeah, those. What do you call those? Miniatures. Thank you. Yes. Anyway. We have the wooden pieces. Yes, I bought all the wooden pieces and... Oh, we don't have the go the coins, but we have enough We have other coins, coins we that we use. use. Anyway, I digress. So, anyway. this one kind of took us by surprise when we played it the first time. And then I saw it six months later at the retreat on the table. I picked it up. Mm-hmm. So... Um, so with this one, you are you are playing dragons, and you are going around to various shops in town. Uh, when you visit the shop, you collect the resources that that shop offers, and then you play a card out of your hand to that shop. And then, as they as the rules say, you fire off one of the cards there. Doesn't have to be the card you just laid down; it could mm-hmm. be any of the other cards there. Each shop holds three cards. When the shop is full, you pull a new shop out. Because you're never going to take dragons off the shops. You might swap some around, but you're never going to take them off. Right. Meaning, I'm sorry, the cards. Each of the cards are various types of dragons. Mm -hmm. So you put a new shop out. The game ends when there are 12 shops out or 13, 14, whatever the the count is for that player count. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're visiting the shop. You're gathering the resources. You're firing off one of the dragons and doing what it says. It could be to pull more more dragon cards into your hand. It could be to get resources. It could be to swap dragons out and then fire something off in the new shop. There's all sorts of different things the cards do. Alternatively, you can enchant a shop um, by gathering resources throughout the game. You are gathering the resources you need to to fire off a spell or an enchantment that goes on to one of the shops and then from then on number one you get the victory points for it but also anybody who goes to that shop now gets additional resources based on what the enchantment was Mm -hmm. so it's just it's a it's a neat puzzle so we've played it several times since and we've both really enjoyed it so this one is sticking around i'm glad we picked it up yep all right the one that left this was a party game that really did not hit with either one of us. I, in fact, do not remember much of it, and that is Jungle Speed. Mm-hmm. 
And there were a few in there that left. I almost would rather talk about one of the Jake and the Neverland Pirate games. <laughs> Those were at least cute. <laughs> but Jungle Speed was, I mean, it just did I don't not think we even finished the game. Us. I don't think we did either. I think you even marked it down as we never as even complete, finished yeah. it. Yeah, we just, neither one of us enjoyed it, it at all. It, it's kind of a memory game. You get... You get cards in your hand or tiles in your hand, and you're playing the tiles, I think, or something like that. Cards. You're looking, I remember they were cards. You're looking for matches, and as soon as a match comes up, the first one that grabs the, the totem right. is the person that gets it or something like that. Like something I said, we like didn't that. even finish the game. We did not like it that much. So yeah. we're going to move on from there. Okay. The next one. The surprise. The surprise on this round was. This <laughs> game, again. before you even say it, this game I thought. Oh boy! Oh, I was just, positive this, this is going to be a cheesy little kids game. Yeah, it was not. It 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 was a cheesy little get kids game, kind of. But kind it was, of. it we actually had a lot of fun doing yes. this, even though it had take that in it. Yes. Okay, so the game that surprised us the most is a game called Jurassic Park Three Island Survival Game. This one has dragon minis, a dragon dinosaur minis <laughs> on here and the goal of the game is to get from point a to point b well to survive your trip from point mm-hmm. a to point b without getting eaten by dinosaurs that's basically the goal so the board is actually very large it is made up of several parts and each dinosaur pretty much stays in their area but you have to get through their area yes to get to be safe from them and then as soon as you get through their area you've got more dinosaurs to deal with in the new area but there are ways to move your opponents back or to to move yourself forward it's all card play and dice rolling we just had a great time with it Mm -hmm. it really surprised us how how much we enjoyed it i would be curious to play this one at a at a higher player count yeah so people each person has a person yes. they're trying to get through and yeah i think this would do this would be kind of fun because this is kind of a one versus many that way because one person plays the dinosaurs if no the dinosaurs were all card play i thought no the i played the dinosaur the cards part. did I you play the, play the dinosaur, dinosaur part? parts yeah. you did play the dinosaurs oh we got to yeah. get with doug and mary doug likes playing the the one or joe <laughs> we had plenty of friends i liked playing, playing the dinosaurs the okay that was fun trying to eat you <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Eat your characters that were running through. <laughs> Wrong. Family anyway, show. Family show. So I want to play this one again. But yeah, you're right. I forgot the dinosaurs were operated by a player. Yes. So, okay. I thought they were all card play, but they are not. Yes. So, so. If, if you guys can find this one, it, it, it was a lot of fun. This was made I mean, by Milton Bradley. Milton Bradley. And this, I want to say this was 90s. Uh, 2001. That's a different listing. Okay, so Noble Knight has this game for 17 bucks. Oh, wow. Okay. Amazon has it for eighty nine ninety nine. dollars Go to Noble Knight, guys. Yeah, go to Noble Knight on that one. Yeah. If you want. It, it's it, really cool. It's an intru- It's a cute game. It's a great ki- it g- is kids not game. It's not $89 yeah, by any stretch. Yeah, ages 8 and up. Yeah. It was, community says, between it's 6 and 14. It's a family game. Yep. Yeah, it's a family Plays in 45 minutes. Best at four. Yeah. I could see that. Totally see that. Because, yeah, I played all six of the characters. Mm -hmm. um, And I think, realistically, you should play two of them Mm -hmm. to get out. So, But anyway, fun game. We enjoyed it. All right. And our disappointment for this one, I mean, you probably guessed this before we even, as I was reading off the list, but that was Jumanji. Yes. This is nothing like the movies. Well... (laughs) And I didn't expect it to it be. It wasn't though, supposed but... to be. It was supposed to be the game they played in the movies. Yeah, and but it is. It didn't it's just seem a silly like game. It, it just didn't seem like the game they played well, in the movies. Well, it's because though, they hardly but... ever play it. Right, but they're. It's also thematic. I mean, because of the. Yeah. It's the movie, so they're going to make it a little bit different. But yeah. This one. <sighs> it was just. It I was think a... my problem was is that it's a dice rolling movement game. Yes. And it also has an area where. You could be way on the lead, and all of a sudden, you hit a spot on the board, and, and you, you each just of the start spots going backwards. Does something different, yeah. 
And I think I was like 20 spaces ahead of you and you ended up winning the game because yeah. I went like 40 backwards. I would go two and I'd bad. go back 30 and I'd it go up five and I'd go back dramatic. 40. It felt like it. It was not. Because I zoomed out to a huge lead. Yep. And, and then, then I kept lost. hitting those areas. And then what the maddening part was that you didn't hit those. Nope. You just kept on going forward I and I kept on backs. going backwards. <laughs> Anyway, this one was not as I mean, we both I love the original movie with with Robin Williams in it. Yeah. Um I really like the newer ones with um with, who is it? It's Ro- the Rock and Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson, thank you. And oh my gosh, why can't I think of her name? Oh, who plays in The Guardians? <laughs> Karen Gillian. Is that, yes. is that her name? Karen Gillian. Jillian. Anyway, regardless, I love these the newer set of movies. Um, I really like Karen Jillian. Um, I really like The Rock. So anyway, mm-hmm. but I, I like the chemistry that they built with the four of them. I really like what they did with the movies, and this game just does not portray it. No, it doesn't. So I did not find it very thematic at all. So anyway, that one it was a disappointment and did leave the collection. So that is it for episodes 38 and 39. That finishes out the I's and the J's. So next episode, we'll go into the K's and moving on. Moving on. So games we recently got to the table. We got a lot of games played. We got a lot of games played these last two weeks. We got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, and we're, we're actively 14. trying to finish up the O's. Yes, we were. So... We have a lot of games that start with O's. We do. And then one that we recently, two of them that we recently bought and went ahead and played. And one we played that was not an O also with uh, Coapola Nerds, Doug and Mary. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that was King Domino. So the first one we got is that between the time the last podcast aired to now is Gizmo. Or gizmos. Gizmos. This one I have looked at a lot. I've yeah, heard so a I. lot about it. I've, I've Dice Tower Retreat, I've almost taken this off the shelf probably a dozen times, but never took it off because there was something else I'd want to play. So we finally bought it. We finally got it to the table. This is an engine builder. Oh, and yeah, it how is. I like engine builders here lately. Yeah, you, you I, took the early lead on this one. Yeah, took the early lead and kept it. Yeah. But... It is 100% an engine builder where there is – picture like uh, Pusher's Explosion and how they have the rows of marbles. Well, this only has one row out, mm-hmm. and there are actions you can take by – you can reserve a card, which is called the filing action. Yes. So you can put that at the side until you can build it because each card needs a certain amount of color – certain colored marbles to be able to build the card. And then they go into one of the actions that you can play to up basically upgrade this action. So you're slowly building this engine, and certain cards have points. Certain cards give you points when you run that part of the engine. So, like, right. you could have four different cards in the filing action, and you're going to – do all four of those when you file a card. Yes. And I, I'm trying to remember all the other actions on there. The uh, file, pick, build, and research. So filing, you're putting a card to the side, you're reserving it to be able to build it. Mm-hmm. Pick, you're taking one of the marbles to put it in your dispenser, and you can only have a certain amount of marbles in your dispenser yep. unless you've upgraded the spot where it tells you how many cards you can have filed or how many marbles you can hold or when you research how much uh, cards you get to look at when you research then you can build you can build your machine and when you build the machine it has an icon on it to tell you what action that's going to upgrade and you will put it under that area so when you would do that action you now get to run that card then there's the research where you draw some cards and you can file or build one of the drawn cards. The rest go to the bottom of the deck. And that's the one where you can also, there is an area where it's not an action you take. It's just you're upgrading different areas of the of your uh, player area of, how, like I said, how many cards you can file, how many cards you can um, look at when you do the research, uh, how many... Uh, 
uh, marbles you can pick for it and that stuff. So it is really cool. And like I said, it's 100% engine building, and I've been killing it with engine builders lately. Yes, you have absolutely been slaughtering me at engine builders lately. But I do enjoy them. I can't win them. <laughs> but I do enjoy them. Mm-hmm. I think I do the engine builders like you do resource management. Maybe. You kind of build a, a production line of resources early mm-hmm. by taking that. And I'm trying to get up the scoreboard as fast as I can on those and never hold it because you, uh, suddenly you have this. My resource engine is. You have a resource engine of doing it. but Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But well, I can... and I think in engine builders, you, I, I always play the long game. And for whatever reason, that does not work for me in engine builders. In resource management games, it does. Mm-hmm. But well, in engine builders, it does not. Yeah, the engine building games, I my f- first half of the game is I'm building that engine to make it better and better and better. So the last half of the game, I'm just going points like crazy. I know. And I apparently take the opposite of track. I don't know. Because <laughs> right. I can't seem to win the stupid things. Mm-hmm. Anyway. All right. So we also got in. Um, well, are we going down or across? It doesn't matter. However you want to go. Okay. We also got in a game of Off Topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, this one, <laughs> we played this with, on Father's Day with both of our boys and their significant others, wife slash fiancés. This was a gift from somebody, one of your your customers, your clients. My clients. When she found out you liked board games, she got you a game for Christmas. Okay. Yep. Very thoughtful. We did not realize it until we were reading some of the questions as we were starting to play that it is not PG. It is NC-17. Yeah, because it's... (laughs) Well, see, this box cover I'm seeing right now says ages 13 and up. Oh, Our box says 17 and up. So I'm like, did we get like the adult version of the game? I'm guessing. I mean, it's not 100% adult version. There are questionable questions in there if you're playing it with younger kids. Yes. I mean, there are questions like, what is another name for grandma? Mm-hmm. You know? But yeah. So, there, okay. This is card number nine. There, there are eight questions you're going to answer. You Correct. have a whiteboard in front of you with eight spots. And right. you're going to answer the question with a word that begins with a certain letter. The certain letter is the on the, the roll of the dice. And I think it's a, is it a 12-sided dice or a 20-sided dice or something like that. it's a 20-sided. It's a big dice. It's I a bigger that. die, yeah. So, like, here, they're showing me card number nine. And the first question, say like it's a an L comes up. So now I, you got to answer all these with a word that begins with L. Okay. So the first one is word words to describe your grandma. Lovely. Nothing is better than blank in the middle of the night. <laughs> Lemonade. Yuck. In the middle of the night? <laughs> I don't know. It's the only thing I could come up with. Uh... White people like white people. Says white people like licorice. I don't know. Licorice, uh, sure. Things you do while you're procrastinating. <laughs> Lay on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be things like that, as long as the first word is that L. the phrase, the word or phrase the, starts with an L. Yeah. Conversation killers. Line. Line. I was thinking leprosy. <laughs> Flexible things, ligaments. Okay. Presidents, first or last name. Lyndon Johnson. There you go. Yep. Lincoln. Lincoln. Things you should have taught your, uh, things they should have taught in school. Uh, okay. (laughs) Lying? (laughs) No. But see, so it's questions like that that you're going through. You got to answer it with the first word in your answer has to be of the letter that was rolled in the dice. Right. And then at the end of the round, you have two minutes because you have a two minute timer. Right. You have two minutes to write all eight in. So it's not like you can't take your time. You got two minutes to write as many answers as you can. And then at the end, you start comparing. You go down the list and you compare. Who got the answers for uh, words you describe your grandma with? And everybody compares. If any of the answers are the same, you don't get points for it. Cross them off. You cross them off. But if nobody guessed it, you could get points for it. If everybody agrees, okay, that one's good. That one counts. Right. But people, you could have a guess you thought would be really good. And people are like, no, you're not getting that one just because you put a word with an L that had nothing to do with the the question. The topic, right. 
So, but then at the end of that, if, after you go through all eight, you score up how many points did you get, and then the one with the most points gets to X the box of what round you're in. And then at the end of the game, you score by however many how, points per round you get. Rounds, yeah. So it's a really cool game. When I it got this game, I'm like, going, oh, goody, a Target game. Target, Or a game from Walmart game. or something. Let's see. Yeah, and we were, we're, we've gotten into more party games here lately. Yeah. But we're kind of like going, oh, well, we'll see how it is. Yeah. And we, we've we played this twice now, and we have enjoyed it. Absolutely yes. enjoyed it both times. Now, this one, like we said, does have some interesting Risky questions, questions. <laughs> that... On Father's Day, playing it with your kids was kind of weird like, with some uh, of these questions that came up. <laughs> we were cracking up. But to remind you, our kids are 32 and 28. So it's not like it's not something they've heard before. Just not in front of us. <laughs> right. So, well, you know, it could awkward. have. But, but anyway. It, yeah, it, it was a little awkward. Yeah. So that was off topic. Yes. If you have a chance to play it, play it. It's, it's a riot. At it's, least it's try it. It's some good laughs. Yeah, it is. Next week, that same day, we got to play Orleans. Or Orleans, as some people say. Orleans is a bag building game, if you haven't heard. Uh, it's where you are taking tiles out of your bag, putting them out, and you place them in areas to get more tiles or to move your your person around a map to collect resources and build building uh, guilds and different stuff like that. Or you're putting, sending them to what is that place where you go and you put your token on the board and you get a reward for placing it there. I, I don't remember I, what it is now. I but, don't remember what it's called. But anyway, though, but yeah, it's 100% a bag builder. It is the bag builder that I like the most. Uh, then it would probably be Amazonia, and then it would be off the plano. Those are the only three true bag builders I think we have, yeah, isn't it? Like those are the only three we have. Yep. But well, no. No, we have um, another bag builder. We do. Qu- uh, not Quadropolis. Um, it starts with a Q. It starts with a Q, people. What is anybody that? know it? Uh, anybody? Anybody? We're gonna take a brief second to figure out what game the heck we're talking hold about. On. I have my list up. Quacks of Quidlinburg. That is a bag builder. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it would be Orleans, Quacks, Amazonia, oh. then Antiplano. No. Amazonia, then Orleans. Yeah. Once I get a handle on Amazonia and figure out how to I... beat you at it, or at least score half your points, <laughs> I will enjoy the game. But Whatever. until then. Whatever. We need to play it some more. Not really, but yes, anyway. We do. Uh, although we did, no, nope, we didn't put it on the list of our the Maple Society Game of the Year. Because you didn't vote for it. Because I can't deal with it. Whatever. Anyway, so but yeah, so that's Orleans. If you like bag builders, this would be the bag builder to get. But if it's Katie, she would say get Amazonia. But life of the Amazonia. This is the OG, or... I think. Well, one of them. All right, so. Another one that we played was a newer game called Daybreak. This mm. is actually on the Spiel des Jahres list for nominees. Um, so we picked it up basically for that reason. We mm-hmm. wanted to try it out. If you know, it's a Matt Leacock game. It is. It's a Matt Leacock game. Who it did is, Pandemic? Yep. It got is us into the hobby. Cooperative. So we thought, what the heck? This is a okay. We've only gotten one play in. Just this one play last couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. This one is all about trying to control emissions and converting your dirty energy into clean energy. Mm -hmm. Um, It's environmental control. Yeah, it's basically all about environmental control. Yep. Each player plays a different country or section of the world. Um, You start the game with so much dirty energy, so much clean energy production, and then... um, amount of emissions whether it be from warehouses or cars or oh my gosh there was like five different things that caused emissions and now i'm drawing a blank but farms and yeah there was a few yeah i was i think the shock for me was i was playing china you were playing the u.s Mm -hmm. china had two car emission tokens Mm -hmm. the u.s had five 
and I don't know why that surprised me so much. I think much. China does has a lot of the electrical vehicles. They plus, might. they have the trains. There's not as many cars True. on the road, I guess. We do not have a very good transit system here. No, no we don't. We just don't. Um, we don't use trains like Europe uses no, trains, or the rest of the not. world uses their trains. True. Anyway. All right, so each round of the game, you are counting up the, the emissions that every country is producing, and you are adding them into one area of the board, and then you can offset that with other things that you've accomplished that round. Whatever the difference in go, whatever the difference is between what is being produced versus what is being offset, and the offsets are basically your, your oceans and your forests. If you haven't lost too much of your oceans and your forest, then it will offset your emissions. Mm -hmm. The goal is to have more of those than you are emissions. If there is extra emissions left at the end of each round, they go up into the global temperature area. And if that hits the top, then you've lost the game. You have six rounds basically to offset enough of your emissions to do so. And this is, I love the card play on this one. So this one is all done with card play and icons, um, similar to a lot of games that use the, the the little circular icons on the top of their cards. Arc Nova and Terraforming Mars are the two that come to mind. The strength of your card action is based on how many of the icons are under it and are visible from other cards you've played. And you can play the cards on top of the current stack or under the current stack. If you just want the icon, you play it under the current stack and you keep your current ability. But maybe you've played out that ability. It's not as useful anymore and this card is better. You play it on top of the stack and now that previous power you had becomes an icon to use with the new power. Um, there are no set turns or set rounds. Everybody's acting together. No, there are. Well, no. There are rounds. There are certain set rounds. There are no set you turns. Because you play a certain amount. Of yeah, you play six turns. rounds. It's I'm sorry. Six rounds, yeah. But six but rounds. But there's no set be... turns. Everybody's doing their actions and trying to deal with their own emissions and their own energy production. And it is cooperative. It is cooperative. Yeah. So you've got to work together. And yeah. you can pass cards off if you have something that allows you to yep. pass cards to neighbors because they really need those icons to make this this ability stronger. Yeah. And you can do that. It is a very interesting game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you got six rounds. You got to, at the end of each round, you've got to deal with crisis. Yes. I'm not and that, if yeah. you fail crisis, certain things happen. And the however many crises you get depends on how many emissions you are because you keep going up this, this like, the thermometer. Yeah, the thermometer track. And when each area on it, depending on how many players you get, fills in, then you go up another level and you add more crises. And you got to survive six rounds of crises and still be... Emission positive. Uh, yeah, you got to survive it all yeah. to win the game after six rounds. So Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's going to take us a few yeah. more plays to wrap our head around <laughs> It'll it. It'll definitely take us a few more plays. Yeah. We've got a we've got a uh, cooperative Sunday coming up with some friends. I think this will be a good one to break out yeah. and try it with them. See, what, see how it plays at four. Yeah. So we'll see. All right. Another one we got played was on tour. And yes. this time we played New York and, and Europe. Europe. Yeah, so Europe. Plays pretty the, much the yeah, same. Yeah, both, both maps we have not played before. Yes. In Europe, there wasn't a lot of difference in Europe than Between the United US, States. Yeah, it played exactly the same. Pretty much the same. It's just a lot of different, a lot more areas to go into, a little bit harder to get into because of all the little curves and everything that Europe has. Yeah. New York, I think, has now become my favorite map to play. I really like New York because of the soloist option and the ferries. Yes, because the ferries can make it, it allows you to connect to wherever. The ferries you can, can make or to. break your route. Yes, and then the soloist is going to add a lot of points to you at the end if you can get a bunch of soloists yep. and areas. So. The way on tour as a whole plays, we have four maps for on tour, two different games, different versions of the games. On tour is essentially you are setting up tour routes for a band or for whatever, depending on the map you're playing. So somebody is rolling two dice, two 10 sided dice, and then there are three cards laid out that show different regions of a country or uh, uh, provinces, depend, again, depending on the map. So each of those cards will have a specific city highlighted. 
that you get bonuses for if you actually put your number in that city. So say I rolled a six and a five. I have to look at the cards, choose one card, and put a 65 into one of those regions, into that region. And then I have to pick a different card and put a 56 into that region. Mm -hmm. And everybody has to do this. And everybody can use different cards. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what city you go into. If you choose the city highlighted on the card, then you get to circle it. And if that city becomes part of your final route, you get bonuses. Simple as that. Sounds simple. And it is in the beginning. But about two-thirds of the way through putting numbers down, it stops being simple. Yes, it. you are running out of room to put your numbers, so now you're going to start cutting off your routes where you're just like, oh, yeah. I've got this perfectly one going. I just need this certain number to go there, and then... That number's never rolled. The number's never rolled, and you cut it off, so... Or worse, it is rolled, and that area doesn't come up in the cards. Right, yeah. That's oh, the maddening that's part. The it's like, yes, I got the number I need. Shoot, that area is not Central available. Is not there, yeah. Yeah, now I do like in New York where if you roll... Or if three cards that that contain the, the same, the same uh, borough, borough, yes, thank on you. It, in New you York get to um, do a ferry route. Instead. Yeah, you do a ferry route instead. So there are three or you can place cards. in the borough. Right, you could place in one of the boroughs, or you. There are three ferry cards as well. And the yes, ferries let you connect, connect to other t- cities via at, the waterways. Other, yeah, other areas to uh, yes. Because there are, I mean, New York is, there's a lot of water. Yes. Around the different boroughs of New York. So the ferries allow you to connect Manhattan to Staten Island or is it Queens Mm -hmm. over to Staten Island or to Manhattan or whatever. Well, you can, you can uh, connect to any of the boroughs. Yes. It allows you to do that because of the way the the, the rivers and everything go through New York City. So... And what were all the boroughs again? Can you remember them all? It was Staten Island, Manhattan, Queens. Those are the... F- why am I drawing a blank on the last two? The Dodgers and the Yankees home but That areas. does not help me. <laughs> Brooklyn and the Bronx. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, <laughs> the neat thing with New York, though, was that each card had anywhere from one to three boroughs highlighted on it. So you could choose any of the ones highlighted on that card. But one of the boroughs would have an icon on it that said, if you choose in that borough, you can write down a soloist icon. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the game, for every one that you're able to connect, if you have a soloist icon there, you get to mark off a soloist of that caliber mm-hmm. off of the board. And then you get score points based on how many of those soloists you were able to hire yeah. or to, to schedule. Mm-hmm. The more you get, the better the points are because, oh, like, yeah. the first two or three areas of it, you're getting, like, one point. Yeah. And then you – Then the it end, goes up really score, quick. like, 16 points yeah. if you schedule enough of those mm-hmm. – to enough of those soloists. So, yeah. So I think that one is really my favorite like map of all of it. If, if I'm going to play this game again, I'm going to say I want to play New York. <laughs> I like the U.S. map. But I do US really. U.S. maps, all right. I like what New York does. I do like what New York. Yeah. Paris was all right. Yeah. Because of the little um, canal the boats, boats or whatever boats, you want to yeah. call them that you can go and connect to other canal boats to get across the river and stuff. Yes. But I do like how New York, it's a little more, I'm going to go all the way up to this city. Oh, look, I, now I need to go all the way down to that city because there's my next number. And you can connect the routes a little bit bigger that that yeah. way. The hard part is, is you get those ferries early in the game. You don't know where you want to connect them yet. No, you don't. That's why so, I wasn't like, taking many ferries at yeah. the beginning of the game. I was taking the ferries close to the end of the game so I could start connecting because I know yeah. where things are at now. Yeah. Oh. Okay. But anyway. So another game we got that th- this was a game we were absolutely dreading have to play because we had played it five times before and just absolutely hated it because we we did not understand it that well, I guess. We just couldn't wrap our heads around it, and so we were dreading to play it to the point where we were almost like, no, let's just sell it before we play it. We know we don't like it. But we played it this time and actually enjoyed it and yeah. understood why people like it, and that is Oh My Goods. Yes. This one, like I said, we were having so much trouble with this when we first started playing it. And it's an Alexander Fister game, and we like a lot of Alexander Fister games, but 
This one we just could not well, understand it. It's we engine just... building, but it's dual use cards, multi use cards. Mm-hmm. It is, and we like the multi use cards, mm-hmm. but this one just it. I don't know. It just never hit for us originally. I, and this last time we really enjoyed it. I think it. this time is because, one, I've really started getting into engine building. And this is definitely engine building to get points. But I've also gotten into where these dual dual, uh, dual action cards, I've started getting this. I, go, I don't care what they are now. It's like, okay, that would be cool to play, but I really need to use it so I can get this better card out. And there's plenty of cards to go to after that. I'll just push my luck and hope something else comes up. Which is what I was doing in this game. I was going, yeah. oh, man, that would be great to put it out. Look at it. It's like 17 points. I'd love to get it out. But, but how off, How? what's the chances of me actually getting it out? Right now, I need it. I need this yeah. resource that's on this card to put this card out that I know right. I'm going to get the points for. Yeah, it's about half the points, but it's points. Exactly. And it's going to do something cool with it. So, but it was good. This one, the end snuck up on us really fast. Yeah, yeah, because we we were just we were really getting into the game. I was like, oh wait a minute, it's eight buildings. I'm at eight buildings. I've already got eight buildings. You look like so do I, crud. Uh, well, no, because you play one more round. So we were in our final round, and during that final round, I did not realize build it. the eighth. Yeah, and you started first, and building. I had just built my eighth building, and yeah. it's like, going, oh crud. So yeah. Okay. So we didn't yeah. overplay it. We just didn't know we were entering the final round when we entered the final round. That's all. Yep. So Oh My Goods is actually over in our other collection, in the travel yeah. collection. But it it brought new life. We know where it's at, but we did not bring it back into this collection. Yeah. Well, because it is such a good game, I, I think that's a good home for yeah, it. Yeah, it'll get played more over it there. It will get played more there, yeah. All right, another one we got played this last two weeks, we actually played last night last with night, yeah, Co-op Co-op of Nerds, Nerds yep. was Oracle of Delphi. Now, we needed this to, to complete the O's, but it is also one of my favorite um, Steffenfeld, Steffenfeld games. games. Thank you. I want. I started to say Alexander Fister. I'm like, nope, that was the last game. Yep. <laughs> it's nope. not Steffenfeld. this one. Steffenfeld. It doesn't feel like a Steffenfeld game, It though. does not feel like a Steffenfeld. Steffenfeld is known for having point salad games. This is not a point salad. There are no points There's involved. There's no points to be having. This is a race. This yep. So the idea with Oracle of Delphi is you have got out a bunch of islands and a bunch of waterways, and you're moving your boat through the islands and waterways in order to complete tasks that the gods have set upon you. You have six gods that you are trying to impress, and you are slowly moving those up to use make use of their powers throughout the game. But more importantly, you have various tasks that you have to complete by by doing so, you have to put out shrines on islands that have been marked for specific gods that you are trying to worship. You have statues you need to put out in certain areas. You need to go get them and then take them to certain islands. You have offerings that you need to put out at the different temples. And what was the fourth? Oh, monsters. You have four, three different monsters you have to be yes. in their name. And then the first person to complete all 12 tasks wins and, the game. And get back to Zeus. And get back to Zeus, who sent you on the, the quest to begin mm-hmm. with then you win the game it was very interesting last night was i think one it was the first time we'd ever played it four player no no you we've played so? this four player have we yeah because we played it with mark and jess i thought we've talked about it with mark and jess i don't think I we ever played it with mark and jess sure we played it no. With, no you are right i remember looking at the only we two, talked we've played about it, it two and we've played it at three yes okay so we played it four player last night mm-hmm it came down to literally one turn difference between everybody being able to win the game. And if I had not screwed up and not taken a card, I took a different companion card. Yes, you did. If I had taken the right companion card, the one that I almost took anyway, because the mm-hmm. one I ended up taking did me nothing. I never even used it. Mm-hmm. I would have won the game. Because I would not have lost a turn due to health. Yes. Makes me mad. But whatever. But Greg did win this one by the skin of his teeth. Because had had you not been the um, the last player in turn order, mm-hmm. because Doug started the game, you won on the very last turn. Now this is not one of those whoever wins you get a whole other round. This is you finish the, the first round. person to finish the first person to to get back to Zeus. You finish the round, so everybody has an equal number of turns, and then the game is over. Mary would have finished the next round. Yes, she would have had. Mary started the game, or had I started the game, you and Mary both would have won. 
it would have come mm-hmm. down to a tiebreaker. Yes. So you and Mary definitely came in first and second. Doug and I each had one more task to finish, which we could have finished. We were very close to Zeus. Well, could Doug still had to. Doug had to take out a monster, and I had to drop a statue. Yeah, he still had to get to an area. No. Where there, was he at the Yeah, monster? he was at the monster. Okay. He almost got it. He rolled and failed the mm-hmm. turn before. Had he made it, he could have turned around and headed back, but he didn't uh-huh. make it. He didn't succeed. Yeah. So, and I just had to drop the statue and travel six spaces back to Zeus, mm-hmm. and I would have won. So, we were literally all right there. It was the closest game I've ever seen of this. Yep. It so this, fun. the game... The game is a lot better than I can re- the last two plays I yeah. remember now. So, I mean, it's kind of gone up a little bit on my Stefan Feld <laughs> list. It's still game. not a top game. It's probably <laughs> midway. It okay. may have even be put out re- rows above Castles of Burgundy. Because Castles of Burgundy is low already. So yeah, I was going to say that's my not list. high praise there. No, not not on not my side. You. On your side, it would be fan- It'd be like the number one game. But, yeah. but it's really cool because you have a... You have gods yes. that you are trying to raise up these tracks. And the way you raise them up the tracks is by once somebody goes, they re-roll their dice yeah. and they tell you what color dice they they rolled. And then if you have a god above the starting line on the the cloud tracks there, yeah. you can raise one of those of the color one that they the rolled. One of the colors that just got rolled, right. As long as you have him above it. Yeah. And then when you get them to their seat, then they give you a special power. And Which you don't have to use right away. No. You, you can, can use save it, it any time. It. Right. So Ares' power was if he's at, at his seat, he, you can push him all the way back down the bottom and use his power. And that is you can take a monster without having to roll yeah. the battle dice. Yeah. You just have to be next to a monster. Right. Done. Because <laughs> when you t- do a monster without that, you got to roll a 10-sided dice. Yeah. The monsters start at 9. You subtract your shield from it if you have any shield. So if you had, say, you had a shield of, set of one, now you have to roll an eight or a nine. Right. There is a zero on the dice, and the zero means zero, and you are taking three damage, if I'm not mistaken. I, take, I think you take eight damage. Okay. I don't remember. But. Anyway, but uh, so if you roll even or higher than what the monster's power is, you take out the monster. If not... Yeah. Then you can continue it, but to continue the fight, you have to take a f- use a fake token, favor token, yeah, favor token, and then that drops their power down by one. You can keep doing it as long as you have favor tokens to take out the monsters. Yep. I found the easiest way is to just push Ares to keep Aries, pushing Ares yeah. to the top and doing it when he gets to the top, get by a monster, take him out. Yep, I'd used Ares twice. And then I, used I, him all I three actually times. did the battle once mm-hmm. and managed to roll. I needed a seven or yeah. above, and I rolled a seven. So, but yeah, this one's all dice play. So yeah, it's, so this or is, dice. It's a pickup and delivery matching. race game. Yes. So you roll three dice at the start of the, each round, mm-hmm. and those dice tell everybody else what they, which god they can mm-hmm. raise, which gods they are allowed to raise, um, if they choose. Which, which god they can only do one. They can only do one, right? But in order to do any action. To move, to pick up a statue, to place a statue, to take out a god, to combat with a god, Mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, not with a god, with a A monster, monster. to do an offering, to pick up an offering, you have to have that color die. Yes. Favor tokens will allow you to manipulate the dice a little bit, Mm -hmm. so I do like that. There is that manipulation aspect, which I feel like you really have to have Mm -hmm. in a dice, any kind of dice game. You have to have a way to manipulate the dice. Mm -hmm. But, um, so... The board is made up of six different colors. In order, you can move up to up to three spaces, but you have to have the die of the color you plan on landing on. Right. Or you can't go there unless mm-hmm. you can manipulate the die in some fashion. It's a very interesting game. There was, it's. I feel like there's a ton of pieces to it, but once you get moving, it's really intuitive as to what you need to do. All the rules stay the same. You have to have a die. You can only move three. You've got. They're all really very clearly laid out. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoy this one. So yeah. Hopefully now that you enjoy it a little yep. more, we'll play it. I've yeah, I enjoyed it a little bit more. But I think you need that four player. I think you definitely need three or four player. I don't yeah. think it two player. Yeah, it does, there's does enough. You stay away from each other. You, yeah. I mean, you don't block each other. You in don't this block game, each and other, and you don't battle each other. It's no. just a race. It's just, yeah, it's just a race, and it's a matter of, well, at one point, you could have won a full round and a half, two rounds earlier than you did, 
but Doug went and took your offering. Yeah, he you took wanted. my offering, he but I, I was right offering. there, and, and where that offering had to go was right there, there yes. and yeah. And so I had to go all the way to the other shot. side of the board, yep. pretty much, to get the offering and bring it all the way back. Yeah, so it was... But it's just little things like that. Doug saw that happening. Mm -hmm. He still had four tasks he had to complete. So he took that offering because that was one he mm -hmm. needed too. He needed a green offering. So it's not like he hate drafted or anything. Mm -hmm. He needed it. Yeah. But you don't get that as much in a two-player game. Whereas Doug was in the right place at the right time and needed it as well. It didn't block anything for him. So he took it. Mm -hmm. And delayed, delayed you. Still didn't block you from winning. But, man, it made for a close game at the end. Yes, it did. It really did. And everybody so. starts off with a special power, too, because yeah. your your ship gets a tile put in, and everybody gets different powers to do things. Yeah, like you get yours, some asymmetric Doug power. had one where he got, uh, every time he took a faith a, a favor, favor token, token, he got an extra Correct. one. Yours was Mine you could was, upgrade a dice without could, using a fi well, favor Well, I could tile. manipulate could, the dice at one less favor token. Right. So if I was only manipulating it one mm -hmm. space, I didn't have to pay anything. So that's the kind of the... the Terra Mystica thing yeah. where you can when you're wanting to, to uh, build an, a land you can change the dial on it yeah. to be able to build it by the shovels that you have. Yeah. Same concept. Yes. Uh, Mary's I don't remember what Mary's was. Mary's was she was able to get rid of one of her Oh that's right. Tasks one of her right tasks at the, the beginning. She and then mine was I started all of my gods at started one. at level at the first level at the starting it's, level. Yeah, below the start line. Yeah. Yep. So it it was it made for an interesting game. You guys yeah. were all complaining through the entire yeah. game. It's like, oh, that's so overpowered. It you're is. You, you're gonna kill us. And had Doug not taken that, you'd have won by a landslide. No, really, you guys were all still pretty close. Uh, no, Doug and Mary each had four left, and I had three left at that point. Was it? Okay. Yes, you, Doug, you would have led won by a landslide had Doug not taken that green offering. Mm. Okay. Okay. The next game. The last game we're going to talk about is an old game. This is from 2006. It's that old? Yes, it's from 2006, wow. and it was the Spiel des Jahres winner. Uh, let me see. I knew that. Yep. Okay. Spiel des Jahres winner in 2011. Wow. So this is Quirkle. This is a... How do you describe Quirkle? It kind of sets up like it's Scrabble almost. It where you have six tiles in front of you where nobody can see it, and the person who can make the pair the most in a pair goes first. The and most, how, yeah. how you make pairs is by or color sets. or sets. That's right. How you make sets is by color, and there's like six different colors in there, or you or by shapes. So like if you have six like diamonds, you can put all the diamonds together, or the stars, or those can make a set or one of each of the s shapes of the same color. Right. But you're putting them out on the board, and everybody, once one's out there, everybody has to build off of that. And you're building in different ways. If you can get it where you are placing the sixth tile in that set, it's called a quirkle, yeah. you get 12 points. Yeah. But if not, you are counting the tile you laid and what is connected to that tile in the sets. Because you could connect to, like, two different sets or yes. three different sets depending on how you set it and you don't have to just set one I don't tile think down you can ever do three yes you can do three because if you are adding to two different columns oh yeah okay and you're setting two tiles at the beginning of both of those tile columns okay. you're connecting three you're so right. you would connect to all three of them and you count how many tiles yeah, are in right. each set and you score that many points yep you're right so, I mean, the key to this, though, is there are six different shapes, mm -hmm. six different colors. Every row can have one color of each shape mm -hmm. or one shape of each, each color. color. Yeah. So, it's the most you can ever have in a row is six. Correct. Period. Yep. If you double anything up, it's not a legal move. Right. Now, you can split off of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and you can and make a whole them. another set coming yeah. off of that one, which is how you build the board. Yes. But you play basically until all the tiles are taken from the bag and one person has played all their tiles. Yes. And then you count up the scores. Yeah. And the I, winner is the one with the most points. This, we've always enjoyed this one. Yeah. This is one that I, I never fail to enjoy when it comes out. So mm -hmm. I, I like this one. So that is Quirkle. 
Um, that's not all the games we got played this week, though, but that'll, that's about all the time we, we have to talk about it. So this is going to do it for episode 68. What has recently dropped to our YouTube channel? Episodes 57 and 58, playing through our collection of part one and two of the O's. We still have two more editions of the O's to do. Also, if you missed it, you can go back and watch the 24-hour board and video game marathon from the Apple Live. And still want to watch it or donate to Extra Life, I'll put the links to the videos in the show notes. The donation links, if you still want to donate, are in the video description. Our Worker 10 placement video will be out soon, as soon as editing is finished. When do we expect that? Hopefully in the next few days, but this weekend is going to be busy, so Monday or Tuesday? So we're talking Wednesday, folks. We will be recording episode 59 of Playing Through Our Collection, part 2, and actually it's part 3 of the O's sometime this week as well. But meantime, please go to iTunes or Spotify and give us a 5-star rating and review. This helps other people find the podcast. Also, if you want to keep up with us and see what we are doing, you can follow us on social media. Just follow the links in the show notes. There you'll find links to Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, Threads, and our merch shop. Or you can contact us directly at society at mail.com. Also, don't forget to look us up on some of that social media to find out what we have up for our Meeple Society Game of the Year. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you at the next one. <laughs>